I think it's time for some more Horus Heresy. So welcome back to the next episode or issue or whatever it is of the Horus Heresy project. The goal of this project is to build and paint the Horus Heresy Age of Darkness box and I have to admit it's taking a little longer than I anticipated, however we are moving forwards. In the last episode, which you can see here or here, don't know where that's going to appear, we built 40 tactical space marines, beaky space marines, the best space marines. But in this episode, we're going to be building 10 Cataphracti Terminators. And are Cataphracti Terminators better than Tartaros Terminators? They're definitely not as good as Indomitus Pattern Terminators. And I'm sure you'll all argue with me in the comments below. Anyway, let's jump in and have a look. So to begin with, the first step is to cut out the torsos and the legs. Now, each torso has a specific leg to go with it, so it's important to keep them together. Now, I say it's important, but I have no idea what does happen if you get it wrong and mix and match them. They might come out better. After a few minutes snipping and cutting, I had 10 Terminator torsos and 10 little legs to go on them. And you can see I tried to keep them nicely organized. Now, remember my Stanley knife? It's called Andy now, after its previous owner. We still don't know who this Andy is. My friend Daniel reckons it belongs to Billy Bobbins, but I doubt any of you would understand that reference. Using Andy, the knife, I proceeded to cut off any sprue attachment points that might still be left on the pieces. But you can use whatever tool you fancy for this. I always use this knife. Next up is removing the mould lines. Again, I use my knife for this. Some people use a file, and you can even buy a specific tool for it. I've never tried it though. Have any of you? Is it any good? Let me know. So in the previous video, someone said that this knife, we refer to this knife as Andy, is not appropriate for building Warhammer miniatures. I have to argue against that as it's served me well for many, many years. I probably should invest in a hobby knife, but my old Stanley is doing quite well, sorry. Next up, I used some Tamiar extra thin cement to glue the legs on. I then decided it was too thin and changed it to the normal Tamiyar gloopy glue. This glue is great and there's an affiliate link to it in the description if you fancy some for yourself. So after a little while gluing on the legs we had 10 terminators ready for the next stage. I always find it nice to arrange the miniatures nicely at each step. I have no idea why. Now, before they start falling all over the place, I decided now was a good time to glue them to their bases. Again, using Tamiar Gloopy Glue. Uh, by the way, Gloopy Glue isn't the actual name, it's just Tamiar Cement. I do love Tamiar products. Some people pronounce it Tamiya. Again, after getting a little light-headed from the glue vapors, all the torsos were glued to their bases. I always set my miniatures a little further back in the base than the middle, just in case they overhang a bit. The next thing to add was the Terugias. I never knew they were even called this until I was doing some research on them. So anyway, we start with removing them from the sprue. Okay, so maybe my knife is a bit too big. It is very hard to tidy up these tiny bits with it. But we managed to get there in the end though. Next up, we have to stick the Terugias on. Now there are specific Terugias for specific legs, so make sure you're paying attention to your instructions. I didn't by the way and had to trial and error fitting them. Oopsie daisy. After a little time dry fitting and assembling the Terugias, the Terugias were all glued on. A couple didn't quite seem to fit right, but I don't think anyone will ever notice. 
I hope. Now you can see here, no you can't because it's too bright, that I've been scribbling on my instruction manual and sometimes I like to write little notes on there and this time I've written, if you're enjoying this video then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you, Damata. If you are enjoying the content here on the channel, then please consider joining the Patreon, the link to which is in the description below, or up here somewhere. We are assembling torsos next. We cut both the fronts and the backs off the sprue. And again, I cleaned them up, but this time I did it off camera. Very professional, hey? Using my Tamiar cement, I then glued the halves together. Now, important tip here, make sure you glue the fronts to the backs and not the fronts to the fronts or the backs to the backs. That would look wrong and cause you some problems down the line. To add a little strength to these pieces, I wicked in some thin cement to the join line. I got the term wicking from watching some people build acrylic aquariums online. It was fascinating stuff. After what seemed like a few hours, all the torsos were glued together. Now it's time as usual to arrange them nicely. Lovely. Okay, now pick up a pair of legs and make sure the front is facing you. We are now going to glue the torsos on and we don't want them facing backwards. Plop some glue under their torsos and glue it on their ball topped legs. You can add a little hip twist here if you fancy it. Again, after a few minutes, you should have 10 half assembled terminators. These really come together quite quickly and are good fun to build. So whilst waiting on the torsos to dry, Wyatt and myself found the most saturated rainbow since records began underneath the windowsill. It turns out it was the sun beaming through the water we use to water the plants. It was crazy colourful and Wyatt liked it too I think. Okay, so it's the arms next. There's quite a lot to these, so again, first up, we remove all the bits from the sprue. Both left and right arms, and not forgetting any special weapons and gear for the sergeant. I went with the heavy flamer, sword on the sergeant, and standard combi bolter, and fists on the other gentlemen. Uh, could marines be considered gentlemen? Let me know in the comments below. Again, next up, we had to clean those parts up, and there were a lot of them, especially the bolter arms. They come in two pieces. Lots of scraping and filing to be done here. Try not to miss any mould lines. Here you can see all the parts laid out for the arms. As you can see, there's a lot of bits. Oh, I forgot to mention the chain fists. We're going to use two of those as well. Now the first part of arm assembly is gluing those two bolter halves together. This can be a little fiddly, but we got there in the end. Now this is when you find all those mould lines you missed as well. Annoying. There we go, nine lovely little combi bolters. Are combi bolters better than storm bolters? You decide. We then use the Tamiar cement again to glue the weapon hands on the arms. Again, we're using the standard gloopy glue for this and not extra thin. Extra thin is just too thin. It's too thin for me anyway. After a nice simple gluing session, we had all the combi bolter arms assembled. That's the fiddliest part of the arms out of the way, uh, unless you count drilling barrels, but I want to forget about that for now and move on. We can now attach all the arms to the torsos. I work through these methodically and glue all the bolter arms on first. To prevent the Terminator's arms from drooping down when drying, I lean them up against things. In this case, it's the Tamiar glue and a big lump of blue tack. Do you even get blue tack in America, by the way? When they're completely dry, it's on to the close combat arms. I use the pose of the gun arm to get a nice contrasting pose for the fist arm. Well, I try to anyway. It didn't take long to get all those arms on. 
and you always seem to get one odd pose per five, don't you? Check out those pointing fingers. Very intimidating. Now here's a little tip for you. Always make sure when you're assembling your Space Marines, in this case it's the Terminators, that you stick the heads on after you've stuck the arms on because sometimes you might want the heads to be looking at where the Marines or Terminators are aiming. You don't want them looking the opposite direction or just straight ahead with their arms sticking out randomly. I've done it a few times and I always feel like a complete fool for doing it. It's the heads next, and these are the smallest heads known to mortal men, I reckon. Be careful they don't fly off and disappear into your work area somewhere when removing them from the sprue. Again, using Andy the knife, we clean the heads up. Yes, it does look a bit big for this job, but it did work. We then stick the heads on. I put the heads in the head hole and then poke them into position with a brush so they're looking where they're aiming. I then wicked in the Tamiar thin cement and this worked out quite well. After a few minutes, I'm sure you will agree the results are head turning. My jokes really are a head of their time. I'm sure you'll agree. Next up it was the shoulder pads and apparently I didn't think it was worth filming, although I should have done as there's four pads for each Terminator, two under pads and two top pads. I put the right under pads on first. And then we moved on to the left. I forgot to put these on once in a previous batch and I never did hear the end of it. I should have just kept my mouth shut and tried to hide it. Next up I took all the top pads off the sprue and cleaned them up. I left them off the terminators for painting separately later. Remember those Mark VI Space Marine pads we did in the previous video? I added them to the same pot. Hopefully I won't ever lose these or spill this somewhere. Hopefully. I also added the little grenade harness to the sergeant's head. I probably won't use it in the game, but I think it looks cool, even if it does have obvious seam lines that need tidying. With the grenade harness added, the Terminators were ready for basing and painting. Until I realised I didn't drill the barrels. I haven't decided if I will or not, it's just too much work. Or is it? What do you guys reckon? So that was how I built 10 Cataphracty Terminators. What did you think of that? Oh, I've got an itchy foot now. Have you built your box set yet? If so, have you painted them? Are you well ahead of me or are you even behind me perhaps? Anyway, what do you think is going to be the next episode in this series? I'll give you a hint. It's part of the box set. If you want to see some more Horus Heresy Project episodes, I know you do, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. As always, thank you very much for watching and always remember to drill your barrels.